Hello, I hope you have all been doing well. My name is Nui and I am currently a graphic design student and I am entering my fourth year of university this fall. I'm currently in my second month of summer break and today I'm going to be doing something I have been putting off for some time now which is to rebuild my portfolio website. I made my first portfolio website around end of sophomore year. I want to rebuild my website in a way that best shows my work and me as a person. And with the help of learning path and classes on Skillshare, it has really helped me make the process of rebuilding my website a lot easier and efficient. So Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across various genres. Some of the classes they offer is animation, film and video, graphic design, freelance and entrepreneurship, and productivity, and so much more. I am currently in my summer break, so I've been having a lot of time exploring other skills I've been interested in doing. Um, some classes I'm currently taking are Figma prototyping, a deep dive beginner to pro for UX UI designer, and learn Blender 3D, become a 3D illustrator by mastering Blender. I'm taking these two classes because a lot of designers recommend knowing how to use Figma and Blender. I've always been interested in learning how to do 3D art, so for my portfolio website, I'm taking a class called Webflow for Beginner Design Your Portfolio Website. This class specifically is meant for building your website from scratch, which I'm not doing, but I've been getting a lot of good inspirations and ways I can better organize my contents and my projects. I hope this summer you can invest in your self and your goals by starting a learning journey on Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link will receive a free one month trial of Skillshare. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Today I'm going to share how I personally make a portfolio website based off of like what I've learned from my professors and my peers. So yeah, there's no one right way to do it and I hope this can be helpful or inspiring in some way. Okay, so... In order to build a portfolio website, you need something, you need a project. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned about portfolio making, every single professor I've had has always emphasized the importance of process documentation. Process documentation is really essential because people are always interested in seeing how you came to the conclusion of your final product. And I know there's a saying called process over product. Like some ways you can process document your work is by taking pictures of your work, taking screenshots of your files, your drafts, writing down your thoughts on a notebook, or you can do what I do which is take videos and put some background music and turn it into a vlog. Anything to show the process is like what people are interested in seeing. It just shows a lot about you as the designer or artist. It's really important to have all of your work saved on a hard drive or some sort of backup because you don't know what's going to happen to your files. I fortunately have not uh, encountered anything serious with my work. I know someone who lost their file of a book like the week before it was due. Things can happen and you don't know when it's gonna happen so always have backups of your work. This is an external hard drive from WD Element. It's the My Passport SSD. This can hold two terabytes of worth of work. I really like this one because it's really slim and really light to carry. Now that you finish your project, Yay! So next, what I usually do is I document my final product of my work. So for example, this is a book I made this semester. I try to take some really nice pictures of my book. I just use my iPhone camera to take pictures since it takes pretty good quality pictures, but some people buy cameras specifically for like documentation. It's a really good investment to make if you are serious about building a really nice portfolio. Something I do with documenting my books is I also like to use a scanner to scan spreads of the books. The reason why I do that is because it's a visually a lot more interesting to see scanned spreads than like JPEGs of the spreads. With your physical projects, there's two ways I usually uh, document them. One way is to just take a really nice picture with good lighting so that I can make a PNG version of the book so I can make it something like this. 
Another way I like to document my work is by making like a scenery in the background. So for example, this book I made this semester, it's called Apophenia. So Apophenia means like the human tendency to seek patterns in a random um, place. And so the way I document this book is by I went to the studio and I took some of the clear thumbtacks there and like I rearranged them on a wall to make it look like there's a pattern and I put the book on the wall and I like took pictures of it. You can be creative with the way you document your work too. I know some people show like the spine of the book, the back, the sides. You can do anything. And then after you take some really nice pictures of your book, then you want to send it to your computer to start building your website. I use a website maker called Cargo. The reason why I use Cargo is because my school recommended us to use Cargo. So that's just what I use. And I've been very happy with this. I'm sitting right in front of my desktop. So I'm going to share you my screen and I'll be in like the corner somewhere. So here is my portfolio website. Woo! So I have a header, information button. This is new. I made a menu bar which organizes the contents of my work into different sections. This semester, I made four branding projects, so I thought that it would make sense to make a dedicated branding section, especially since this is also good for if you're looking into working at a company. I made a type specimen this semester, so I made a dedicated type section. I'm also hoping to make some in Japanese characters in the future. And this is my photography. The way I organize my content is by I put the title of the work, I put the date of when it was made, put a short description of what the project is about. At max, I put five sentences as the descriptions, but sometimes it gets much longer. For example, my weather pattern project, see the description is really long and like I don't want to put that in my main page, so I just put a short version of it here. Next, I put what kind of skills I used for my projects in the third column because that's just what I see a lot of designers do and a lot of my peers do that. So I think part of it is to show how you were able to incorporate it into the work. So, so when you click on the project, you see how it was made. I suggest putting um, the dimensions, the tools and methods you use to make the book. So this book is five by eight inches and it's perfect bound, but for example, the zine I made, I also put in, I used the Rizzo printer, I used acetate and vellum paper, and I spiral binded the zine. So in my opinion, I think it's nice to know how and what materials you use to make your project. It's something I'm curious to know whenever I see someone else's work. So yeah, I think that's up to you with what you want to do. And here, that's the cover image for my book. Below, I attached spreads of my book and you can click on it to see some of the spreads. Unfortunately, I didn't scan this book because there's over a hundred pages. But yeah. Another example I did for the city of the future. This one was for my project for visual systems this semester and all of my deliverables for branding projects were on PowerPoint slides. So I just put all the PowerPoint slides here. And for the images up here, I had the main logo and then I put up mock-ups of the project here. For my weather pattern project, um, there is a spread that's really big and long because I made a accordion book so i just put all the spreads on the bottom here i worked on my website before i started filming this and it's just always a work in progress and like it's always going to change because as life goes on like i'm going to change as a person and maybe my style my view of design will probably change and then that might mean i need to rebuild my website again or change it in the way that works for my portfolio but yeah this is how i make and organize my work i hope this was helpful or interesting to see stay safe drink lots of water and see you in the next video bye <music>